Let's take a look at some of the additional options you have regarding your Excel chart. Now again, clicking on a chart itself activates that component of the screen, which also then makes visible to you the Chart Tools category of the ribbon, under which you have three tabs, Design, Layout, and Format. Clicking on the Design tab, you have a number of options here across this ribbon. Now before we investigate any of those options, let's take a look at how we can take this chart and move it to its own sheet within the workbook because we don't want to have it obscure our source data. If you right click on a chart, you will have an option to move the chart. Clicking there gives you this dialog here and I'm going to say I want to make this a new sheet and I'm going to simply just call this one chart. And uh, maybe I'll also uh, hyphenate and call it sales data. And OK. What that does is it created a new tab in my workbook and it maximized the chart to fill the screen. I click back to sheet one, I see my source data. If I were to change any of the values here, that would reflect in the chart because they're linked, they're, they're connected. Now one aspect of Excel charts is that for any data point in a series that you hover your mouse over, you'll see a little pop-up that will tell you what it is that's being represented where you're hovering. So for example, this tall orange column here, what is this? Well, this is the December statistic for the Cleveland, Ohio dealership, which happen to sell 42 automobiles. And that applies to any of these bars here. I can hover over them and see the corresponding details. If I didn't like the chart type that I selected, I can go to this Change Chart Type icon, again on the Design tab of the Chart Tools category, and here's where I have all the categories to choose from. Say I wanted to use a line chart instead, I click there, that takes me down to the line chart category, and I have, I have certain options here that don't represent the data points, and I have some that do, that represent them with little points on the line itself with markers. So I'm going to choose that one and then OK. All right, now what I see here is I see a whole bunch of lines, but it's not portraying my data in a most usable option because I'll see for every dealership I have the 12 points of the year and that's where the markers occur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on switch row and column and that's going to make this a little bit easier for me to follow because now I've got the months of the year across the bottom axis. I see my legend over here at the right and I see there's a different color representing each dealership. So if I just want to focus on say Minneapolis, which is the green color, I can look at that rib that um, that line and see where I, I have a it starts out between 15 and 20. It's actually 18 automobiles sold. Then it comes up, it peaks and then it dips down again and then it comes up again and the best month was July where 38 automobiles were sold. So by having switched the row and column data that presents this information in this particular chart type in a more understandable fashion. Now any aspect of a chart can be formatted whether it's a color change, whether it's the scale of values on one of your axes, whether it's the font, whether it's the legend, how it appears, where it appears, you have the ability to manipulate any aspect of your chart. Okay, now you have chart styles here. And this is a scrolling section. If you click the middle button, you'll scroll down. And if you click on one of the options, you'll see how that will change how your data appears. If I click the first one, all right, that's all like black and gray, grayscale. But I click through different options, it has different color themes that I can apply. I can go down to the next row and see how my data is going to be represented with the different options as I click on them. You've got many, many choices, many options here. If you click this little bottom drop down, that'll actually drop down that whole uh, master list of options where you can click and see how your results are going to appear. All right, there's some uh, you know, pretty artsy options. Some are a little bit too intensive, but you can likely find something that you're happy with. And I'm going to go up the screen here. I'm going to go ahead and keep all my colors uh, different. Okay. All right. Now, 
If I needed to move my legend, I can click on it. It becomes its own object. I've got the handles around it. When I do, I can go ahead and click and make it narrower and make it taller, making sure all my data remains visible. I can uh, look for that four-way arrow as I hover my mouse over it, and I can relocate the legend by dragging and then releasing my mouse to a new spot on the screen. I can click on my plot area, and I get the handles around that. I can then extend this out to the right to make my graphed area a little bit larger. Uh, you can format anything you have here. If the background you want to change, you can right-click. Try right-clicking and experiment a little bit. You can format the chart area. If you click there, you get a dialog where you can include different fill colors or gradients, even a picture or a graphic in the background. You have other options to choose from, a border color, border style, shadow effects, 3D effects. You can play around and uh, maybe have a little too much fun working through your options, but ideally you want to make sure that what you're representing is understandable visually. It's supposed to make what you have here in your sheet more visually understandable in terms of uh, who you might present it to. If you drop it into a PowerPoint presentation, you want to make sure that everything is neat and clean, well labeled and understandable. All right, we have a layout tab here in the chart tools as well. Clicking on the layout, you have the option to format and you see here you have a little drop down. You have all the different aspects here of the chart you can choose from. If I want to format say the series for Cleveland, I can click there. I can then say Format Selection. Notice how that particular series now has these little markers or these little handles around the markers. I say Format Selection. That takes me into this dialog here where I can assign different attributes just to that series alone. If you don't like the colors, that's how you can do it. Line Color, Marker Fill, Marker Line Color, All right, you have a chart title. If you want to put a chart title in here, click that drop down. If you want it centered, overlay, or if you want it above the chart altogether, click, and there you get a little text box. You can type in your chart title, as I'm going to do right now. All right, I can click off it. I can click onto it again. I can then move it, or I can stretch it, or I can adjust it where it appears. If I want my axis, axes to have titles, in other words, the number of automobiles on the left side and the months of the year going across the bottom, I can tell I want to include axes titles. The legend, you know, you have different display options of where the legend might appear, if you want it to float over your, over your chart, overlay, uh, the right, the left, the top, the bottom, no legend at all. Data labels. If you want all of your data points to have labels, visual labels, within the body or the area of the chart, you can say so. You can have them centered to the left or to the right of the data points or above. Let's try above. And there we go. Now you actually see for every marker the actual number of automobiles in this particular instance that were sold. And then if you follow it vertically down, you'll see the month of the year that it corresponds to. Data table. The data table is really it's a an imitation of the source data sheet that you can display and it takes up a lot of space on your chart. I don't recommend this, but you see what it does is it takes a a form of the data sheet and brings it into the chart itself. I'm going to go back to my data table uh, button drop down here. I'm going to say none because I don't want that to appear here. Uh, you have other options for your axes for your grid lines. Maybe when grid lines to appear Maybe we went primary, horizontal, or vertical grid lines. Hover over the option and look at your additional choices. Let me see. I'm going to go ahead and add a vertical grid lines, and I'm going to say major. And there you go. That makes it a little bit easier to follow each month vertically, so you can see just the data points and the values that fall for each month of the year. All right, your plot area. You have choices here as well. You want to show the plot area, not show it. You can also include trend lines, so you can see how trends, if they're heading upward, if they're heading downward, you know, your lines, your, your bars, error bars, there are many, many options here. On the Format tab, you can format your options as well. Say I want to click on my the months of the year, the horizontal axis at the bottom. 
I can say format selection. Notice how the format options stay with you as you click through the different tabs. Layout, design, except for in the design tab on layout and format, those options are there. You have different shape styles you can apply. Word art, you can apply word art into your, into your chart. So you have many, many options, many choices with which to work.